Oh, that's up, that's up there. Okay. okay. If anyone wants to actually see what will become the tunnel portal, quickly zip up there. And, uh, Quite nice. Yeah. Because this is basically the end of the route for now. Right. It's due to open officially in October. Um, although whether that the actual yeah. whole route will be open, we'll set a date for the official opening. Yeah. Right. Whether it will yeah, actually be fully. Be open no. Uh, <laughs> no, this is the two, the two tunnels Greenway. Sorry. Okay. Um, this was, oh, what was it, the old Somerset and Dorset line yeah. uh, from Bath down to Bournemouth or wherever. Um, so how far does it go? Will it go? It, it basically cuts off a corner between here and Midford, a village about, it's only as the, stove, uh, as the crow flies, only about two miles it's, that way. It cuts way. away two one in six hills. If you sort ah, of build right. yeah. up those, that <laughs> yeah. hill, you've had to cycle up it, yeah. you go through the tunnel. Right, right, right. It's two, two one mile tunnels. Right, oh marvellous. And the longest bike tunnel in the world, actually. Yeah, it's all lit. Uh -huh. There's an existing piece of shared use path goes all the way to Froome pretty well and um, so there's an awful lot of um, cycling territory out there and walking. It also forms a 13 mile half marathon circuit with the canal tow path right. that's more or less off road and we're expecting it to have about a million users a year here and there. And it's just been completely changed the, um, the face of cycling in Bath we hope. Um, Suscron has got a big lottery grant for a million pounds worth of it. We, we raised a quarter of a million pounds through something called King Bladed's Pigs in Bath, which is an arts project, yeah. which led to an awful lot of networking and, um, and such like. Um, the council's put £400,000 into it, um, and, and there's various other smaller grants that have made that up, including private donation. So it's a, one way or the other, the £2 million cost of it hasn't been a problem <laughs> much, as much as actually just getting the permissions and then mm. sorting who will do the work and how it's to be done. Are you getting just one contract going to do the work? Um, it's been left as a series of contracts. The, 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 the linear part, which is a bit you've just been up, um, was originally unsurfaced and then we've put a surface down on that. And, um, and, and this bit is going to be the core of the route, which is really what, what we're about, the two tunnels. And um, that's, 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 that's the next bit that's going to be left as one big contract. There's a fair size viaduct as, as well involved, which is in good nick, but just waiting to be brought back into use. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's this summer's work, basically. Theoretically opening October ish. <laughs> after a, after a yeah, six years plan in there anyway. It yeah. was, yes. It, this, this was a, a 2010 piece of work in here. This cutting was filled to a depth of about six feet above that tunnel right. portal on the top of the piece of concrete. So something like 40 lorry loads of spoil came out of this and had to be carted away. <laughs> um, that, 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 that was the, the, the start of work on the whole project. You can just about see a sort of tide mark on the cutting sides where they did the old um, ground level was before we dug it out again. Oh. How's the path going to be serviced? Is that um, again, that's going to be uh, uh, the same as the path out there, a, 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 a good surface on it, a, a good walking surface. That, that's the way that's going to work. So we await that with great excitement <laughs> and some anticipation because it's been a long wait. So how long has this been in the planning then? Um, we ha I was sort of talking about it with my little sister in about 2004 and we decided to go public with a campaign in 2006 on right. the 40th anniversary of the closure of the, the Somerset and Dorset Railway, which this was. A, a very um, missed and much lamented lost line. So it was your idea basically? Um, not really because people have been having this idea since the 1970s to reopen this line and use it for something because it was, it was a complete waste as it was. I mean it wasn't a complete waste because Linear Park was built in the 70s and very much valued by the local community but it's sort of joining up the bits and making it into something bigger and, 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 and a very slight echo of what the old railway offered, which was a transport route, which, which it's ideal that it become one again of, of sorts. But it, was your, it was, wasn't a SAS Trans campaign originally? No, it, not at all. It was a local campaign. group, a, a community group. I formed a community group around mm. to put a website together. And, and this, this isn't a one-man band thing. There's about ten of us on a committee working towards it and attending meetings and doing the sort of mm. <laughs> the committee heavy lifting mm. stuff mm. to just keep on at people that, that this is really wanted by a lot of people in Bath. To, to change the way some of the city gets around. Have the local cycling campaigns been um, involved in it as well? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yes, yes, they've been backing up to it. Um, I mean, initially, I think everybody thought this was too ambitious, but in fact, you can aim too low quite easily and sort of spend 
spend your time sort of big five thousand pound projects when um, yeah. when there's yeah, um, there might just be two million pounds there for the grasping Two million doesn't idea. sound too much for this. It sounds quite it's, I'm surprised it's, it's as low as that. It is. Um there's there's been various prices for this work over the years um, and then the, the, the previous um, campaign for this I think came out with a sort of eight or ten million pound budget, I can't quite remember because um, it was a bit of time ago. But but realistically the costs the physical work involved isn't cheap because all the heavy lifting has been done by the Victorian engineers. This is all ready to use practically. Um, the most expensive component of this project is the tunnel lighting, um, which I think tips the balance of about three or four hundred thousand pounds. But, but for the rest of it, it's all there. The, both tunnels are in pretty good condition. This one in particular was owned by British Rail. Um, it's been on a, a, a maintenance inspection regime at least, and in fact, it hasn't needed any work in the last 40 years. It's going to need very minor repairs. Um, the, the, the long one's a bit of a different case, but it's still in good nick for a, a tunnel of its size type and for one that's been out of use for 40 years. That, that's not a problem. We're going to stump up the electricity charges. Um, the council has very kindly agreed to cover that out of this house, of probably out of the street lighting budget. Yeah. Um, but since um, we've very kindly um, uh, providing um, LED lighting, the electricity costs are suddenly minuscule compared with what yeah. they would have been a few yeah. years ago. It's one of the, the benefits to the delay for the project mm -hmm. that the, the electricity costs for running the lighting in the tunnels have dropped probably by a factor of five, if not more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that's brilliant. We're really pleased at that. And it's going to be really good lighting as well, really pleasant lighting. That we'll, mm. we'll see a tunnel later on on the Bristol <coughs> path path that has sodium lighting through it, which is what they did in those days. But yeah. mm -hmm. this one's going to be a very much more atmospheric um, structure to, to pass through, no matter mm. if you're on foot or, mm. or cycle. And so, in terms of getting like approval and, and, mm. and so, which level of government did you go into? Was it MPs or um, local councils? Th this, or this, was, this, or? this is all local authority, really. Yeah. Local authority owns Linear Park, so it's vital to get them on our side. Yeah. And basically, in 2006, we, we formed a community group, said, Look, we've got this brilliant idea, it's going to be wonderful for Bath, wonderful for Bath tourism. Mm -hmm. um, it, it'll have a whole lot of benefits to the economy. So, um, who's going to get behind us? Sustrans, would you like to put your hands up? And Sustrans did. <laughs> and Bath and North East Somerset, would you like to pick, get involved? And they put their hands up as well. So that, 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 it just hit at about the right time for, for both of those organisations to come on board because as a community group I mean we could sell an awful lot of marmalade and get nowhere with this and really it needed organisations with engineering experience. Sorry guys, it's half past. Yay, we, we'll, uh, we'll go. <laughs>